bum, 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 bum. Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another uh, Fake Grand Order video. What happened since last time? Remember how I said, like, hey, it's weird that they didn't make any banner changes. Um, here's a banner that was not released on the JP side around this time. It's here on NA, so I'm going to be talking about today. It's the Revival Swimsuit Servants Pickup Summon, aka Scooby-Doo 2 All Monsters Unleashed. Here is the, the biggest bait banner that you've ever seen possible. They've unleashed like 16 different limited swimsuit units to attempt to get you to summon on something before the deluge of a buttload of good summer banners are about to be released. So let's get into it. And let's talk about it. So let's first actually look at the the at the, 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 uh, the banner itself, which has six pickup summons, which will feature sixteen limited swimsuit servants related to the past summer limited events, which include six pickup summons featuring sixteen limited uh, related to it. In terms of the five stars, it is uh, Musashi, Summer Musashi, Summer Ruler uh, Saber, Summer BB, Summer uh, um, Summer Alter Saber Rider, uh, Summer Tamamo Lancer. And Summer Saber Archer. Um, and on those banners themselves, the ones that are going to be the four stars with them is Osoga Behime and Carmilla, which go with Musashi. Um, it, oh, just a mysterious alter ego, Melt, basically. Melt is with <laughs> with uh, Ruler over here. Uh, for BB, she has Maeve and she has Mysterious Heroin XX. Um, for Maid Alter over here, she has Helena and she has uh, Raiko. Summer Raiko, all of them summer. I just assume everything I say is summer. Uh, Tamamo has Kiyohime. Um, and Summer Saber Archer has uh, Marie Antoinette and Martha. And that is, not only that, there's also a limited time craft essences that also follow them, but I think it's, in addition, the following 30 limited time craft essences originally available in the 2018 to 2022 limited will be only, will be the only craft essence that, wait, what? In addition, the following 30 limited time craft essences originally available in 2018 to 2022 limited time summer events will be the only craft essence summonable? So you can't get any of the other craft essences, even if you tried? Huh. Is that other banner like that? <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> let me see, uh, uh, let me see this other banner that, um, real quick. Cause I, now I'm kind of like, wait, what the hell? That seems kind of crazy. So this banner must be the same way, right? Um, in addition, the following 30 limited time craft lessons originally available will be the only- okay, yes. So they're both the same way. Okay, just to be sure here. Okay, all's fair. I didn't know that, actually. Uh, that does make it a little bit easier to get some of these, uh, summer craft essences. I had no idea, just because I would- I was not going to be summoning on that other banner, so... That actually does increase your chances of at least getting all the three CEs. I don't know about the fours and the fives, because they are going to be just wild random in terms of what you get, but still. But yeah, we have the 2018, we have the 2019, we have the 2020, we have the 2021, and the 2022. And this is how the schedule is looking like on the 24th, that's when Musashi's gonna come out. And then uh, she's gonna be here until Friday, basically. And by Saturday's time, it's gonna be BB, but it's also starting on Friday. That's when Ruler's gonna start. And then Maid starts on the 20th. Uh, BB ends on the, 20, uh, on the 28th, which is Tamamo picks up. And then we end it off with uh, uh, Saber Archer over here as the last one here. Okay. Um, this summon will be will be held as different summons for each of the Okay, so yeah, they all have their own banner, so it's not on rotation, which is good. This is talking about the guaranteed. Um, but the featured servant, the following servants will be only summoned through the summon lineups where are featured. Okay. The following servants will be added to story summons after the pickup period. Will not be added. Okay. That's it. I'm just trying to look at, make sure everything I got here. It's weird. Okay. So those are the units. I am going to talk about the five stars. If you want to add my quick talk around these four stars, this is a very weird banner to get to because a lot of the appeal of summer units is I have my favorite as a summer unit. So really, it doesn't really matter what they do at the end of the day. <laughs> you could try and put them on multiple different tier lists, but if that's one of your faves, you're getting their swimsuit version and it doesn't matter what the hell I say. <laughs> you go for them <laughs> and you make do with what you have. So, if you are someone who's a big fan of Melt, this banner seems insane. It'd be the only Fortune Feast 4-star. 
most summer units would kill. Most people would actually kill to have something like that, where you don't have to sh uh, share it with another one, and then you get another one to five stars before you ever get one copy. I've seen that enough times to know it does happen. Um, and the same thing goes for Kiyohime as they both come here. Um, and the rest of them are wildly different, various uses, but I think of the ones that are most useful, it's actually probably Melt is the one that comes to my mind immediately because she is able to farm very easily and in a very nice way, and she is Lancer, so there's that. Now let's go into the actual units themselves. Please brace yourself because there's five of them and there's a lot to go through. So let's start with year one as well, may as well. Let's go with Lancer. Tamamo Lancer. Oh man, this really is early, early, early times. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Mmm, Tamamo no Lancer. She is a Lancer with two quick, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is Beach Flower EX, which increases the party's attack for three turns, and then also increases crit star generation for male allies for three turns. 20% attack and 42% male star rate. The second skill is the Midsummer Witchcraft A, which charms one enemy, reduces their defense, inflicts curse, and then charges their MP gauge by one. That's a demerit. The defense down is 30%, and the curse damage is 100. Is 100? Is well, not 100? It's a thousand. I should also mention it does say just charm one enemy. It's assumed that this always hits. Pretty sure, unless they have like some kind of resistances or something. Otherwise, that's why this has such a huge demerit in charging their NP because this charm will almost always hit. Um, unless some shenanigans happens. And her third skill, which is the Goddess Metamorphosis Sky, is a rank A. It grants invincibility for one turn, increases own crit damage for three turns, increases crit star generation rate um, for three turns, and then for one turn it increases MP generation rate, debuff resistance, healing received, and then also charges her MP gauge. And I think previously this would have a demerit of a 500% chance of just stunning her for some reason. <laughs> That's how early year one of Fago was crazy. They're like, we need to put some form of stun on her, or she's just going to be the runaway best unit. Um, none of that kind of design ethos ever went into Merlin, who was just allowed to run roughshod over the meta the second he dropped, but whatever. Um, crit damage is 50%, star rate is 50%, MP rate up is 50%, everything is 50% except for MP gauge, which is 30%, and this is a cooldown of 6, the second skill is a cooldown of 7, and the first skill is a cooldown of 5. Her passive skills are Riding A, Territory Creation A, and Divinity A++. Her pen skill for the third one is an increase on attack against Berserker enemies. Her Noble Phantasm, which is a rank C uh, Buster Noble Phantasm, which is the everlasting summer sunlight, the sunshine parasol of Master's <laughs> most favorite deity, is an anti-unit, rank C, hits four times, and it deals damage to one enemy, 600% uh, at level 1, and all the way at 1000, it's level 5, and then she deals extra damage to male enemies by 150% at charge level 1, and then at the final charge, it's 200%. And that's what she does. Uh, for a year one unit, she at least has a very clear method here, which is if you're in a challenge quest and you're looking to beat up a man, she's your go-to girl. <laughs> she will gladly wreck the shit out of any man unit that is in her path. Being Buster and having at least two Buster cards means a lot of like Buster meme type stuff. And she does have the this ability here, which is going to be giving her a lot of decent amount of crit damage from it. So yeah. Uh, she's definitely someone who's usually more towards challenge quest or any time you need someone to take down a single main enemy And thankfully there's plenty of dudes out there So if you're a big Tamamo fan, it's very easy to use her and with Vich you can have the ultimate uh, Tamamo and No matter what I say here I get in trouble, but you get Vich and the, the two <laughs> So uh, you get Tamamo and you get Vich and that's uh, a real nice looking team there for sure and all Buster related. Um, and that's her. I'm going to very quickly move on now. Let's go on to, I don't know, I went to Sabres because in my head she's Saber. But she's Saber Archer. Or Scortoria, if that's what you prefer to say. I prefer to call her Summer Saber Archer. Summer Saber Archer is a uh, archer with two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her first, I forgot they fucking buffed this. <laughs> this seems unnecessary, but okay. They do buff this skill eventually, but for the time being, it is just 30% to arts and 20% and defense. That's Summer Splash A+. And eventually it turns into EX, which is increases art performance for 3 turns, charges MP gauge, ignores evasion for 3 turns, and then increases party defense for 3 turns. 
uh, 30%, 30%, and 20% there. Um, uh, the arts, NP, and defense. The arts and NP are 30%. Her second skill is the protection of the Beach House EX, which recovers on HP and then reduces MP gauge by 10%. That is a demerit. The heal is 5,000. Third skill, Beach Flower B, increases party's attack for three turns, and they increase uh, crit star generation rate for males allies for three turns. It's 18% attack, and then for males, it is 38% star rate up. I love the a lot of the summer units for a while were like very heavy into buffing men until they realized, hey, we're just gonna stop releasing man units. I think we should actually just like stop giving these dudes <laughs> things that buff males because <laughs> we only released. I think there was like a single year where they released like two dudes. <laughs> like there's not actually that many that you fight plenty of males, but you don't actually release that many males. I might be thinking of something else. I don't think it, it there had to have been. But there was definitely years where there was just barely any men units released at all. Um, anyway, cool down to five. Passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Independent Action A, Territory Creation A, and her third append skill is a Anti-Writer. And her rank A Noble Phantasm is the Excalibur Vivian, which is the Sword of Sunlight and Glittering Victory. It's rank A, it's arts, it hits 10 times, and then deals damage to one enemy with a 70% chance to reduce their MP gauge by 1. The damage is 900% uh, 900, 900 at level 1, and if you get her to MP5 like I accidentally did, it's 15,000. And then she charges her on MP gauge over as an overcharge effect, which is 20% at level 1, and 40% if you get her to overcharge 5. Uh, and that's this unit. Um, she's really good. She's like really damn good. She was able to loop before looping was even a thing for arts. She was just doing that shit on her own. And now there's Castoria out. And she's already just better at it. She's fantastic. This is, if you want a testament to see how much she just hard carries someone, you can watch any of my videos uh, where me and my brother used her. <laughs> And she was oh, usually always the MVP at the end of it, just kind of resilient and then killing everything. Now well, some of that does have to do with the fact that she is MP5, but she still deals plenty of damage. And she's able to get her MP back to 100% very easily. So even if you have her at level 1, the only thing that's a negative is the second skill if you're at level 1, is that you can't really use this. If you have her MP2, you'll be able to use this, and this demerit barely means anything. Reducing your own MP gauge by 10% when you make 100% back in a single turn doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it, it, it means absolutely shit bupkis, and thankfully on JP, they give her this ability here, which I would assume the only function is is that after you use the second skill, you can use it to get 30%, because you will never need this 30% unless you're on some weird edge case where you want to use her with her second append skill, so that you start with 50%, and then that way you can build up to 100%. I guess that's a way to do it for sure, but... I've been able, like I said, as long as you have, maybe if someone doesn't have Castoria, maybe they have a Tomomo and a Castoria friend, and they want to exploit it that way, you can give her maybe a 50% starting NP thing and kind of work with that. I don't know, work with what you got. And sometimes you got to think outside the box in that, remember that not everyone has my collection of CEs when I'm thinking about, like, how would you use this unit, but... Anyway, I digress. This is a fantastic unit, and she's been basically fantastic from the start. I don't know why they buffed her. I assume it's because they're like, you know what, let's just buff someone, and they buffed her. So there you go. Um, big fan, very good, awesome. Let's see who's next. Oh god. Uh, let's go over to the writer class. How much time is in this? 13 minutes? Let's go. Can this make it to 30 minutes? Probably. If you made it this far, please leave a like. Uh, where the hell are you? There you are. No, that's writer. Oh, that's a shame Mordred Mod didn't come back. Mm. Maid Summer uh, Alter is here. She is a writer. She is two quick, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Summer Sweeper A, which is increased at own attack for three turns, increases quick performance for three turns. It's a 30% attack and 20% uh, quick up. Her second skill, which is buffed, is Coaching A+, reduces one ally skill to the uh, cooldown by one, increases their crit star generation rate for three turns, deals a thousand damage to, without killing them, it's a demerit, and then a 500% chance to grant them a build upper delayed buff for one turn. Build upper increases max HP for five turns after one, um, increases their max HP for five turns after one turn, effectively kind of negating this small bit of damage that she does. Um, because it deals a thousand, but then you gain three thousand from it. And the star rate up is 50%. 
Third skill is Reload C. Increases on quick performance for one attack three turns. Um, it is 30% quick on a cooldown of three, which is very funny. <laughs> very funny card indeed. Passive skill, Magic Resistance B, Writing B, and Independent Action EX. Her third skill is an Anti-Saber Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is a quick one. The Sword of Tenacious Burning Victory, a rank A Noble Phantasm Anti-Army, deals damage to one enemy, six hits, quick. Charges on MP Gauge by 10% is its other bonus effect, and the damage it deals is t uh, 12,000 at level 1 and 2,000 at level 5. If the overcharge effect, it reduces their critical attack chance for three turns, which is 30% uh, a charge to level 1, and then all the way at the final charge is 30%. And that's our girl over here. Uh, I feel like she's almost on the cusp of being really good, but she has a very weird kit. It was weird for the time being, because my favorite thing when I was using her, because this is another summer unit I have, I really liked using this skill and using it on herself so that she would just have a buttload of reloading Cs so you could be able to get 60%. That's funny to do, but it's not really very practical. <laughs> it was funnier back then where I was just like, you know what? When she's going to unleash this Noble Phantasm, she's going to do a, a decent bit of damage here, and it's going to be really funny. Uh, the only thing that's kind of a bummer is that she does have enough, like, um, quick hits, but I think she probably would need something like an MP Charger to be a little bit better, or something that gives her MP gain. Right now, it just feels a little bit bare-bones, but it's because she's a second-year Summer Unit, which is funny to say, because, you know, Summer Nero did also come out this year and had a crazy busted ability. Uh, that is still good to this day and no other servant has ever had so maybe they could have gone just a little bit harder for her and maybe buff her a little bit more but i don't know i have always liked her um i think she's cool looking who doesn't like a maid on a with a gun hey summer maids summer uh jp got a summer maid this year but yep yeah, definitely a favorite of a lot of people and obviously <laughs> Uh, there are ways to use her, even if I do wish she was just a little bit better and she was a little, be a little bit more fun to use her gimmick. Because this gimmick of like doing this would be really fun if this skill just did a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I mean, Ishtar has a delay on hers and she gets like 50%, so I don't know, maybe they could figure out something. I'm no wizard man. Let's move on to the next unit, which is BB Summer. B B B B B B B B B B B Summer Moon Cancer. She is the second one ever added into the game. BB Summer. Uh, she is a... She has a moon cancer, first of all. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill, which gets buffed, is self-modification love, EX. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Increase on critical damage for three turns. Increase on crit star absorption for three turns. Increase on attack for three turns. Grant self an on-tack activation buff for 3 turns, and then gain 20 crit stars when attacking with the extra attack. Crit damage up is 50%, absorption is 800%, and the attack up is 30%, and that's on a cooldown of 5. This is very important. Um, before this buff comes in, she does not increase her own attack, and she does not do the thing with 20 crit stars on extra attack. Second skill is the Aurora Pork Porcelum. I didn't say that right at all. Golden Pig Grail A. Charges on MP gauge, recovers on HP, increases on buster performance for three turns, increases on MP damage for three turns, grants self eva evasion for one attack three turns, the MP up is 50%, the heal is 3000, the buster is 20%, the MP damage is 50%, and the cooldown is 7. Very unfortunate, but we'll get into why in a little bit later. But Third skill is the Faceless Moon EX, locks the set of dealt command cards for three turns, same cards throughout the, si the skill duration. Command cards do not get reshuffled when the skill is activated. When the effect is removed, if a party member is defeated, or command shuffle or change order is used, and then you also gain critical stars every turn for three turns. Uh, if you did not understand anything of what I said, basically the five cards that you have currently in your deck are locked in and will stay that way for three turns, unless someone dies or you switch them out, in which case it changes. There you go. And the, uh, the star regen is 10, and this is on the cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Territory Creation A, the one who swallows the earth EX, existence outside of the domain B, and goddess essence A. Her third skill is an anti-foreigner attack damage aptitude, which is increased account on attack against foreigner enemies. Her rank C, her rank EX, um, Noble Phantasm, is Buster, and it's called the CCC, the Cursed Cutting Crater. It is an anti-world rank EX Noble Phantasm, which hits three times and it deals damage to all enemies, reduces their MP gauge by one, and the damage it does is 
300% at level 1, 500% at level 5, and then there's a chance to further reduce their MP gauge by 1, which is a 10% chance of a charge level 1, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 50%, so this should always activate when you use it, at least I think it should. And that is BB. Um, BB is really good. I really like BB a whole bunch. I've always liked this gimmick she had right here. I think the one thing that has always held back BB for a lot of people is that they feel like she doesn't deal with a lot of damage. But there are ways to kind of make up for that. The one thing that's kind of a bummer is, as you can see here, because her NP is on a 7 turn cooldown, you would have to either make a lot of concessions to loop of her with... Um, with Vich, which I think you have to use Oberon at that point. Yeah, because you use this turn one, and she has, let's say she has a 50% starting crafty, so if that's 100%, turn two moves, it's now six. You have to use both Viches, which gives her, puts it down to two, and then she'll be at one, but at that point you won't have enough charge. But let's see, what if you use Kaleidoscope? So you Kaleidoscope, turn one. No, you still wouldn't be enough. That's crazy. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty sure it requires Oberon or more thinking than I'm willing to do right here. But under certain circumstances where you have a big enemy that you can fight at the end, what you can do is that you can lock in what her command cards are and make it so that she always attacks. And that's how she can make up for not having... Um, uh, not having this on a, at least a six or lower cooldown, which I have done in the past, and which is what I did for grinding with BB in the most one of the most recent um, events, where it was a big enemy and she was able to hit her noble phantasm, and because it's Buster, it didn't matter. I didn't have to really care all that much about MP gain until it was time to hit the dude for the final hit. She could uh, this skill when it comes in is going to be really good. I don't think it's here yet. I don't remember when this comes in. Uh, yes, it's gonna be a while. It's not here yet, but when it comes in, that'll be really good. She also does have existence outside of the domain, which that means that she can be used with Van Gogh. And Van Gogh does a very funny thing where on her uh, arts <laughs> noble phantasm, she does the following. She increases the crit damage of all existence outside of the domain allies by 100% for three turns. And then you get the aim 10 crit stars every turn for three turns. And then you can just have a lot of silly nonsense if you want to use the two of them, which sounds like a lot of fun. But this is true of anyone with, outs with existence outside of the domain, which is why some people, conspiracy theory, think is the reason why they stopped making so many units that have the passive skill existence outside of the domain that are foreigners. Um, they still make foreigners, just some of the most new recent ones don't have that skill, and it's a little bit suspicious. Because now it's starting to feel like, D, are you just afraid that Van Gogh will just break something or something? I don't know. It's an interesting thought process. But that's BB. I really like her. Another really good unit on here. It's insane bait going on here. Let's move on to some more bait as we go on to Doom 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 Ruler. And we talk about Summer Ruler over here. Oh, okay. <clears throat> she is a ruler. She has two quicks, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is the Royal Bunny A, charges own MP gauge, grants self evasion for one turn, grants self the Royal Bunny jump delayed buff for one for one time. Royal Bunny jump increases own attack for one turn after one turn. The MP up is 40% and the attack up is 30%. This is important to keep note of and the cooldown is of 6. The second skill, which gets buffed into Royal Card B+. Um, the selected allies command cards will not appear for one time one turn activates uh cannot activate if only one party member is left on the field it randomly deals five new command cards new command card cycle increases party's critical damage for three turns increases party mp generation rate for one turn the crit damage up is 50 percent the mp rate is 30 percent and the cooldown is of five it was previously six and the mp rate is new if you don't fully understand what this ability is, basically similar to BB, except for BB locks it in, but this one reshuffles it, except for you point to one ally and say, I absolutely do not want any of their cards, which will give you a higher chance of either getting her cards or someone else's cards, whoever cards. Basically, the other two units, you have a better chance, and then there's a new command card cycle. And the command card cycle is something that probably not a lot of people are dealt with, but if you don't know what that is, it basically goes like this. A command card cycle goes by 15, and the cycle starts anew when all 15 cards are played. But, 
if in the middle of the cycle, which so you use five cards and you use the next five cards, you interrupt the cycle by either introducing a new unit or you shuffle it, it starts the cycle new again. So, and then so that means you would have a good chance of getting um, her cards next that were already used previously. <sighs> it's very silly. It's a very silly mechanic that not a lot of people know about, not a lot of people use, but I do occasionally use it whenever I am grinding for certain things because I am weird. Third skill, the Knight of the Lion B, which increases on attack for three turns and then increases on crit star absorption rate for one turn. The attack up is 40%, the absorption is 600%, and the cooldown is of six. The passive skill is Magic Resistance A and Territory Creation B. The append skill is the third skill, is the anti saber attack damage aptitude, which increases on attack against saber enemies. And our Noble Phantasm is the rank A, bright, uh, <sighs> shine brightly, radiant hall of mine. Anti Fortress A plus Buster Noble Phantasm hits four times, deals damage ignoring defense buffs to all enemies, charges on MP gauge by 20%, activates first, increases on quick performance for one turn, uh, increases on arts performance for one turn, increases on buster performance for one turn, and it's 20%, 20%, 20% at charge level one, and at charge level five, it is 40%, and that's our bunny over here. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that, hey, how can you loop with a unit when it only has 40%? Uh, so you have to use the second skill. <laughs> If you open up this skill so that she starts with 10%, no, is it 10%? Yes, 10%, then effectively she has a way to have a starting 50% NP gain, um, which will help out a whole bunch when you're making cards, but you have to kind of put this in your mind when you're building her specifically, if you want to take advantage of her and actually buster loop of her. That or just use Oberon and don't care about any of that, but that's a one way of doing it for sure. And at that point, you will then never have to worry about this 40% again. I assume when they made her, they came her with the idea that she's always going to get 20% from her Noble Phantasm. Uh, and they didn't have the idea of like Koi and Skya looping in their head. So that's why they have it at a weird time. It would be kind of nice if they ever decided to like bust this up and make it a little bit better. Um, because what she's missing right now is that she's a ruler. You'll notice I she does a lot, but she doesn't actually like have that much attack. And that's kind of a bummer. If you are a um, ruler, you need to do a lot of damage to offset your kind of like usually lower attack. Usually rulers have slightly less attack uh, because they usually are a little bit more defensive focused. So it's something you kind of have to build around and there's ways to build around it to make it good. Um, for example, like having another MP copy, which is what I have for mine, which is how I'm able to kind of use her and loop with her with times, <laughs> is that I specifically made mine to be able to. Um, but you know, it's something to keep in mind. This is a really, really popular unit. I know that much. I really love her as well. I love having her and I love actually finally being able to use her because for the longest time I was not able to use her for various reasons. And a lot of the negatives around her, you feel it when you're using her. <laughs> you definitely feel it. If you do not have a Kion Sky or anything else, you can definitely feel all the negatives that people have said over her about her over the years. Uh, they pile up for sure. But that being said, I really do think she's a cool unit, and she's awesome to look at as well. All of these fan ascensions. Why wouldn't you want to just have this unit? Look at that bunny jump. That's fantastic. But yeah, that's something to keep in mind of when you're going here. This is going to be a very expensive unit to you, because you're going to have to get this uh, along with this, and this requires Serpent Coins, so something to kind of keep in mind as you're going through it. Hopefully they do eventually buff her, probably in her Noble Phantasm. Just to give her just a little bit more damage on it and maybe do a little bit more than ignore defensive buffs. I don't know. I don't know what they would do, but it would be nice if they did. Let's move on to the final unit, because this is the unit that would most likely be the reason you summon on her. <sighs> okay, final one. Let's go. Final battle. We are talking about Summer Musashi. Summer Musashi is a berserker. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is the Excel Turn B, Grant Self Evasion for one attack, increase on crit damage for one turn, 50% crit damage on a four turn. Is this cooldown really four? I've never noticed that, but that's because she has not lived long enough for her to take full advantage of this. The fifth Serving B is her second skill, which doubles the number of hits when normal attacking with Arts cards for one turn, increases on damage when normal attacking with Arts cards for one turn. And then increase your own NP generation rate for three turns, 30% and 50% MP rate. That's very good. 
third skill is the Tenmagogen EX. The ignore invincibility for three turns, increase own attack for three turns, grant self a guts uh, for one time three turns, revives with a single HP, and then just deal 5,000 damage to yourself and reduce all enemies' defense for three turns. Uh, she's here for a, for a good time and a long time. Her attack up is 30% and her defense down is 30%. Passive skills include the Madness Enhancement EX, the Magic Resistance C, and the Writing D, and the, <laughs> and the Divinity D. She has both Ds. Double D. And now let's go on to her third of pen skill, which is an Anti-Lancer Critical Attack Chance Resistance, which is increased on a critical attack chance against Lancer enemies. And a rank EX Noble Phantasm is the gun... I was told there would be magic sword busting. <laughs> Which I don't believe that's what it translates to, but let's go with it. I think this is just more something she says. I'm, I'm not 100% sure now that I think about it. It's an arts rank EX Noble Phantasm that hits four times. It deals damage to all enemies, reduces their critical attack chance for by 30% for three turns. The damage is 450% at MP1, at MP5 at 750%, and then she has a chance to seal all Saber enemies MP for a single turn. 100% at charge level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge, it is 200% chance. Summer Musashi is a fucking fantastic summer unit. Probably one of the best uh, arts loopers out there. When you think of some of the top arts loopers, uh, in NA specifically, I should say. Uh, we have Space Ishtar, we have Summer Kiara that I should say are just generic and can be using kind of any team. Um, when it comes to arts, those are typically the best and they're the best at it. Um, Musashi has the benefit of always having type effective disc damage on him, which means that she can deal a little bit more damage. And be, even though she is a berserker and typically berserkers have not great MP gain, that doesn't matter because her second skill helps with that because it's 50% up. <laughs> so you won't really have much of an issue with that. A lot of her, there, a lot of her uh, skills are typically here to survive, but it's okay because if you're looping with her, nothing will survive by the end of it. She's a fantastic unit and is a definite bonus to anyone who is heavily invested into arts. But um, obviously, we're getting Summer Kama this year, um, which is another fantastic looper who is on in. On par with Summer uh, Ishtar, not Summer Ishtar, Space Ishtar. In a year from when we get her, we get uh, Summer Ibuki, which effectively power creeps all <laughs> everyone and is the new kind of poster child for Berserker and Arts and is fantastic. So if you're someone who's playing the long game, obviously Ibuki is going to kind of be your main goal here. But if in terms of someone who just is a big fan of Musashi, um, and in general summer units, this is definitely the cream of the crop. This is one of the best ones out there. I have used her non-stop since getting her. I have not regretted a single day since getting her. <laughs> She's been a whole bunch of fun. I'm glad to have a Musushi, Musashi of any kind. Um, I do not have the Saber one. I've tried and I've failed multiple times. So to have the Berserker one and have her be so uh, such a prominent looper that you can just use her whatever. Which again, I should say that... When it comes to looping, as long as a unit is able to do it and you figure out a way to do it, it doesn't really matter how good they are. Because even if they... Mm, because at the end of the day, you want to use the units that you want to use, right? It's just that some units end up being easier for you to use. And in this case, Musashi ends up being very easy to use. If you have Castoria, if you have Tamamo, or you have anyone really with NP gain, you can figure out a way to use her and he'll do right by you. And she's a fantastic unit and worth getting 100%. And that is finally the end of the 5-star banner units. Now, here's the question that's going to be tough. Um, should you summon on this? I mean, the smart thing would be probably not something... Now, let me tell you, am I summoning on this? No. But that's because I have um, almost all of them. I have Musashi, I have Ruler, I have Maid, I have... Uh, Saber, I have BB. The only one I'm missing is Tamamo, and I've given up hope trying to go for her, and she's on featured with Kiyohime. I'm not about to get a Lancer and then f see her ass pop up and go, ah, oh, goddammit. I got... I already have you at NP2. <laughs> I don't need more copies. I would like Tamamo, please. Um... And yeah, this is very hard, because for a lot of people, people are going to be baited into this. Because if... If any of these cards are, like, your favorite like dude you're just gonna look like for example if you're a big fan of bb 
this is your best chance of getting a huge, big, playable BB. You're going to be going for this BB, and I can't stop you. And that's fine. And I would say go for it. Just know that with the stuff on the horizon, you got to make your concessions at some point. You have to say to yourself, which of these units do I actually care more about? If I do say that Summer Kama is coming and she's better and Domin is better than some of these units, which he is, does that really matter to you if you don't give a fuck about Domin and you care ten times more about someone that, like, for example, um, Ruler over here? Then, obviously, in your mind, you're going to go for Ruler and you're going to try it. So, I don't know. I think, in general, it's going to be up to you to decide if you're going to summon. I know that if there was any unit on here that was uh, someone that I wanted or needed, I would definitely be summoning. Um, thankfully, I was able to pick up Summer Raiko, because that was this would definitely be... And thankfully, <laughs> Summer uh, Nero isn't on here, because if Summer Nero was on here, I would likely throw a multi on her to try and get her. But thankfully, not here, because she was uh, most recently featured, so she can't show up again and spook me again. So yeah, I'm going to say best of luck to you if you end up summoning on this. A, a lot of these SSRs are worth having and can be usable and are fun to use. And it definitely it would be feel great to have them. So I'm not going to fault you if you go for them. I'm not going to judge you for it. I just wish you the best of luck, man. And I hope you enjoyed the video because that's the end of it. Thank you very much for watching. That, how long did that end up being? Uh, f almost 40 minutes long. Jesus Christ. If you somehow made it all the way to the end here, please leave a like and comment. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how you're planning to summon. Did this throw <laughs> a wrench in your summer summoning plans? I would be kind of curious to hear. Um... Because obviously bait banners are here to try and get you, catch you off guard, and this is maybe the ultimate catch you off guard. My brother literally said, "Hey, did you see what's going on in NA?" And I was like, "What are you talking about? You mean the Drake banner?" It's like, "No, I'm talking about they brought back like six summer units." I'm like, "What?" And I looked, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Uh, I'm kind of in a crazy situation here at work, but I am gonna have to make something about, make a video talking about this. So it's a little bit crazy. But I digress. That's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Best of luck summoning. And if you're not summoning and you're really holding off hope for your summer comma, just hold on just a little bit longer. Or your, or your Doman. A lot of people were some waiting for Doman, so just hold on. You're almost there. We're almost at the finish line. Stay strong. And if you can't stay strong, go for the bat and get your unit. Till next time, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Goodbye.